So I've been gaming on my new laptop, the Dell Precision 5530, for almost two months now. And I've been curious to find out how much of a difference I'll get in performance with these three use cases. Closed lid, open lid, and with a cooling pad. If you haven't seen my review of this laptop, check it out here. In this video, I'll be game testing it in three different configurations with the lid closed, the lid opened, and the lid opened with a cooling pad underneath. For the tests, I'll have three rules. All tests will be done with the laptop connected to an external display and the laptop screen disabled. This will ensure that the open lid tests are equivalent to the closed lid tests. Since the benchmarks only run for a couple of minutes and we want to simulate real world performance, Tests will be done back to back after running a 10 minute time spy stress test. This should get it nice and toasty and fully heat soaked. We should simulate a prolonged gaming session. And finally, I'll be testing using synthetic benchmarks and games with built in benchmark tools to ensure they are as equal as possible. If you're concerned about the safety of using this laptop closed, I don't think it's an issue because it vents hot air to the back through these slots. So hot air shouldn't be blowing back on the screen when closed. It vents upwards and downwards in the open position versus only being vented downwards in the closed position. Also, the vent opening is smaller in the closed position. Because of this, I'm expecting lower performance in the closed position, but I could be wrong. You're going to want to watch till the end to see how it works out. The cooling pad I'll be using is the Technet Ultra Slim Cooler. I'm also curious to find out if this is a waste of money and if it actually makes a difference. I like the design of this one. It's slim and has a low profile comes with an extra USB 2.0 port, although I wish there was a way of disabling the RGB or at least changing the color. But to be honest, you hardly see it when it's on anyways, so it doesn't really matter. You can find it linked in the description if you're interested in picking one up. Before we get into the benchmarks, this video took some time to make and I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd give that like button some love. Also, if you're interested in purchasing Windows 10 Pro keys for a fraction of the retail price, check out my link in the description where you can pick up one or two or even three. And the results are in. We'll be starting off with the synthetic benchmarks. Geekbench is up first. The results show that the open lid and cooling pad tests were identical, but the closed lid lost out big time in the multi-core score, getting 3,933, which was about 24% less. I forgot to mention that I'll be keeping score for each test. This gives the open lid and cooling pad a point each. Next up, we have 3D Mark Time Spy. The open and closed lid results were extremely close, within a half percent difference, which is pretty much identical. The cooling pad got 1,614, which was slightly ahead with a 4% lead. The score is now 0 for the closed lid, 1 for the open lid, and 2 points for the cooling pad. Fire Strike has the open lid and cooling pad pretty much equal, and the closed lid being 4% less, with a score of 4,321. From the synthetic benchmarks, I'm noticing a trend. Once the tests are more CPU intensive and less GPU, it seems that the open lid can keep up with the cooling pad. The score is now nil to two to three with the open lid hanging in there. Could the cooling pad be pointless? Let's find out. Let's move on to the gaming benchmarks. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is first. If we look at the average FPS, you'd think that the closed lid took this one. But if you look closer at the minimum FPS, you can see the cooling pad is way ahead with a minimum FPS of 25. The cooling pad was by far the smoothest and the closed lid was a choppy mess, while the open lid had hiccups every now and again. The score is now zilch to two to four. Rainbow Six Siege is up next and the cooling pad was far ahead with at least a 10% lead in average and minimum FPS. The score is now nada to two to five with the cooling pad stretching its lead. For the final test we have Horizon Zero Dawn and watching the benchmark this was the closest gaming benchmark and it shows in the results with the open and closed lid close but the cooling pad was better. This gives a final score of 2 for the open lid, 6 for the cooling pad and a big fat 0 for the closed lid. Honestly this result wasn't a surprise at all but what I didn't expect was for the average FPS to be close between the open lid and the cooling pad. Where the cooling pad made a difference was in the minimum FPS, which gave a smoother experience and the difference between a game being played smoothly or with frame drops. The thermal package of this Precision 5530 is definitely inadequate for this Intel i7 and Nvidia P1000 GPU. 
That's what you get for creating a thin and light workstation or a creator laptop. You have to have trade-offs. Especially since mine can't be undervolted because it was gimped by Dell in the current BIOS update. Pro tip, if you have a laptop with an Intel 8th to 10th gen and haven't updated your BIOS, avoid it like the plague. You might just lose the ability to undervolt if you do. If you want to know more about this laptop and you're in the market for something fairly powerful on a budget, find out if this might be your next purchase. Check out my review on the screen right now.